I'm here with Anki. Anki King is my fiance. Um, and Anki and I live and work in this same space. And we've pretty much just been inside during the whole lockdown. Um, on the weekends, one day during the weekend, we usually drive upstate and go for a walk in the forest, which is really nice. Um, other than that, we're just in the studio working. And, you know, we have um, lost some people to COVID-19, which is really sad. By April 3rd, we knew three people who had died from COVID-19. The most cathartic part of every day, I think, is the 7 p.m. cheer. You know, going out at seven o'clock and ringing our cowbell, you know, for, for the healthcare workers and essential workers, it's so good. We look forward to that every day. <laughs> that's your that's your happy hour cheer. <laughs> exactly. That, that's our transition between uh, that's our transition between the studio and the moment when we start making dinner, which is unusual for us because we usually don't cook. So, li- under normal circumstances, ninety eight percent of the time we're ordering in or we're going out for food. We're not used to cooking. Wait, who's um, doing the cooking? We both are. We're both. We've both been struggling through it. Thank goodness for allrecipes.com. <laughs> that's awesome, John. That's awesome. I love it. I think that's a wrap. My name is John Mitchell, and uh, and I'm a painter. I also draw and make prints. I live in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and I'm I draw and paint from direct observation somebody comes and sits down and i look at them and i think okay here's an idea this girl sitting on a chair with a white wall and she's wearing black clothes so it's like her black clothes against the white wall but once i start the painting anything could happen you know you might find a triangle in the negative space of the chair that's exciting that you didn't notice at first and because I'm working from life, I move around a lot. So I find things as I'm working. I work and live in the same space. So I moved into this loft. I don't even want to say how long ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I've been here for a long time. And uh, so I've lived here and for longer than I've ever lived anywhere. And, and the first thing I'm going to do is take you, that's kind of the living space. Um, to this drawing Mm -hmm. can you see that yes so this is a i love you know the history i feel like being a painter for me has uh, we're in a continuum and we make things that are inspired by other work from the past and then hopefully the work we make will inspire somebody in the future this is one of my favorite works of art it's by albert dewar from 1514, it's an engraving called Melancholia. And for 15 years, I went to the Met on Fridays, Friday afternoons, and worked on a drawing of Albert Dewar's Melancholia engraving. But it's the it's the work of art that I spent longer on than I've ever worked on anything. I spent 15 years on this one drawing. But what was um, it about that engraving that drew you? This is one object that's in the in the image. You see that magic square? Yes. It's um it's a series of numbers of 1 through 16. Yes. And it's this ancient Greek seal of Jupiter. And um I've always been kind of fascinated by that. I went to Yale for graduate school and during my first year I worked in the basement of Sterling Memorial Library binding old books. And then the courtyard of that library where I would sometimes have my lunch, there's a magic square like this of the ancient Greek seal of Jupiter. um, And it's built into the wall, the exterior of the courtyard building. And when I saw that, I, you know, I thought, oh, wow, what is that? And then I realized, oh, I'd seen that before. And then I went back to this image in a book and found it. And, um, and I've just always been fascinated by it and I use it in my work. So I show you that because, so this is what I'm working on today is a painting that I have going. This is, I call this painting the April window. 
as in the month of April. So this is a painting of the glass block window in my guest room during the month of April. And I started this series of 12 paintings of the glass block window in my guest room in 2015. And I'm doing 12 of them, one for each of the months of the year. So, so that's the glass block window. And um, so now I'm working on the May window, which mm. is the one that's on the easel uh, in the guest room now. Got it. If you can see it there. This is, a, this is my palette. And my palette is uh, low to the ground. Um, it's kind of, so these are kind of the long kind of brushes that I use. Nice. Um, so here's like, okay. So here, like I work from on these paintings from how far is that? Maybe five feet away. Uh, so I'm always about five feet from, from the painting as I'm working. But for me, these glass block windows um, are related to that magic square and Albrecht Dürer's Melancholia painting. Why is it, John, you're always five feet away or about five feet away? Is it just the perspective situation or um, color combination? What is it that, that you need to be in distance? Um, I like to work from a distance because here I'm gonna show you a painting that I've been working on of my friend Twinkle. Um, and as I walk up to the painting, you'll see the paint kind of break up and maybe an impressionist way or post-impressionist way. Um, from a distance, the painting coalesces into an image, but as you get closer, you start to see just brush strokes. I wanna, I wanna make the paint look good. And when I'm painting up close, um, it's just a very different feeling and it makes a very different kind of image than if I'm painting from say five feet away. You know, painters like, I think, Diego Velasquez and John Singer Sargent also painted with long brushes. Um, you know, my tip top favorite living painter now is Bryce Martin, who paints with long brushes. The one on the floor here is my friend Sally. She's uh, from Egypt. Wow. She's from Cairo. And Twinkle is from Panipat, India. Wow. And I'm very interested in um, these two paintings of these two girls one from India, one from Egypt. And I'm interested in the history of Egyptian art and the history of Indian art, that they're both two ancient cultures. And that I'm dealing with these two kind of very beautiful young women um, from those ancient cultures. I like the idea that, you know, painting can, it can deal with something new and it can deal with something ancient at the same time. And mm. here is the photograph of my friend, Marsha Marcus. She's a painter. Um, this photograph is from 1954. And you can see there's her and she's kind of wearing this red dress. Yes. And in the painting, she painted her husband wearing this robe that she bought at a vintage store in 1966 in Morocco. And this painting is a riff on Marsha's painting of herself making a painting of her family so my friend alex bailey um is wearing this red dress that's almost it's kind of similar to the one marcia was wearing in 1970 when she painted her husband wearing the same blue robe that garrett's wearing uh in this painting he's you know he's naked in the painting but so he's wearing wearing that blue robe I like that connection, that dialogue of old and the present, you know? Yes. We haven't been able to work on this painting um, during the lockdown, but instead I've been making drawings and paintings of that painting. So here, for example, is a small painting that I have going of the bigger painting. Mm -hmm. And I'm also make, you know, working on drawings from the bigger painting, like this drawing of Alex. I, I've been making etchings of my paintings. My etching tools, so I, have, I have this beautiful um, pen uh, kind of uh, stylus that I use. Oh, wow. This thing, it has a magnetic cap. Um, so that's, that's my drawing stylus. 
Wow. And then, and then I, with this one, I'm using a magnifying lamp. Ooh, can we see it through the mag? Yeah, magnifying glass. Okay. Wow. Can you see that? Yeah, I could see her legs and her top. Yep. So I look at the painting and I draw under the magnifying lamp uh, through the wax, using the drawing as kind of a guide. And I also made an etching of her painting. So you can see like her hand is left of her head in the painting from uh, the viewers left. Right. But when I look at the etching, see it's in reverse. Wow. So her hand is on the right of her head because again, it, it flipped. Wow. So I enjoy making these um, etchings of the paintings. And this is what kept you busy for the last two this months. This is one of the things that I've been working on during lockdown. I can work on these etchings of the paintings. You know, one of the things about making a painting of a person, someone comes to the studio and they sit and they hang out with me. I mean, these paintings take, um, this painting of Jennifer probably took a year and a half. Uh, the painting of Garrett, I think we worked on for two years. Every Wednesday he came at about six o'clock and stayed until nine or 10 o'clock. And it's, and it's a hangout, you know, we really get to know each other. We talk a lot and, but once the painting is done and the person leaves, then the painting becomes a presence in the studio, a physical presence in the studio. And he's always on the side of a bus or I should send you this video. One day I was waiting for the subway and you can see it on my Instagram. I posted it. And he popped up on one of those subway advertisement video screens. It was so funny. And then I'm working on a self portrait painting that's in such bad shape. I don't want to show it to you right now, <laughs> but there's, there's an old self portrait. I'm also a proud owner of John Mitchell's print. Look at this portrait of a girl. This is our new series to promote the art and the artists that we love, especially during the coronavirus pandemic. So until then, be safe and be well.